Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's March 7th, 2019, and this year has been a, uh, a, an atypically long, cold winter. Uh, now, we're known in this area for getting tremendous uh, number of feet of snow, <coughs> getting lake effect snow. Uh, but this season, we really didn't have a fall. The cold uh, winds came and uh, it went below freezing for a very, very long, prolonged winter. So not much of a fall. This time of year, usually things are starting to warm up. It's maple syrup time. Uh, everyone's got their sugar shacks ready to go. But we haven't had those days that are warm yet. We had one day where we have had a couple of days where it's been fairly sunny. And uh, today's video is a is a compilation of some of the uh, the white-tailed deer footage that I capture with our uh, surveillance and monitoring uh, cameras that look at the food forest areas. And the reason that, one of the reasons that I monitor the wildlife so closely, and today's example is the white-tailed deer, is trying to see what, what they're consuming during these really tough times. Now, certainly we know they're obligate herbivores. They, they're eating lots of green foliage. They'll be into your gardens, <laughs> into your trees uh, during the spring, summer, and fall months. But during these prolonged, harsh times, it's known that they'll eat the fallen leaves, the twigs, the, the nuts, any seeds that are there. Uh, they, really, they, will, they will consume just about anything that's plant material out there uh, during these tough times. Now, it's been snowing every day for several days, and that's one of the reasons I'm posting this video instead of being over in the workshop doing the work, because I've got to do some snow blowing today. One of the things I'll do is snow blow wider paths alongside of the excess roads near the food forest so the, so the fawns can get out there and uh, get some of the tall grass. I purposely do not mow the, the, the grasses or the companion plants within the grasses down uh, in the fall months. I want it to be nice and tall for, those, for these very tough times for, for the, for the white-tailed deer. They don't preferentially go for grasses, but during these times, they will consume a lot of the grasses. One of the things you'll see in some of the video that's, that's, uh, that accompanies my introduction here is you'll see the deer really focus their areas at the base of many of the, the fruit and nut trees in the food forest. And, um, and what they're doing is they're going after the deep mulch layer and all the different companion plants. And so there's all different varieties of companion plants that we put there from, from uh, herbs that we uh, consume, foods, uh, the allium species as well, you know, your garlics, your onions, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, certainly many of the flowering species, but one of the things that they're doing is they're going for a lot of the woody mulch and the sheet mulch material and all. They, they actually consume that material as well. I believe it's because of the mycelium that's networked into the area that where all the leaves are, are intermixed with those. Another thing that they'll do is you'll see them uh, standing up and, and starting to uh, getting up in their hind, hind limbs or with some of the lower plants, they preferentially go to the first budders. So when the buds really start swelling this time of year, getting ready to leaf out, uh, they're going and they're getting all those easy to harvest. They will eat the evergreens as well. I don't really show any footage of them eating the evergreens. They're also pretty, pretty clever as far as whenever we get the big windstorms, which we've had, there's some footage at nighttime uh, where the, where the white-tailed deer are going over Pond 5. Now Pond 5 is the one that we've been patching these last few years, but it's completely filled and ice covered now. And this is the after dark ones. Uh, this is right after a really high windstorm. You'll see them eating these little dark things all along the surface of the ponds and around the margins of the ponds. And that's where there's a heavy concentration of black locust seed pods that, that have come down. Hank, please. Uh, another uh, thing that they'll be eating is in some of the areas uh, where, the, where the locust trees are, the uh, honey locusts, the large seed pods, they'll go for those as well this time of year. So there's video footage that I'm probably playing right now during this, this talk of looking at the white-tailed deer. Uh, many people on this channel probably aren't going to be interested in that. Uh, there's a little bit of music that goes with it. 
but it's pretty interesting. And then we have Hank in the background making noises as well. So if you like this video, please leave a comment. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. I got to get ready and get out there and start doing some snow blowing, folks. So y'all have a great day. Bye-bye now.